Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We'll focus on building better cattle through nutrition that lasts with expert insights from leading producers and our friends at Purina Animal Nutrition. And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to this special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us. You know, one of the most critical factors in your success as a cattleman is the nutrition you provide for your animals. Sustained nutrition can make all the difference in the growth and health of your cattle. So today, we're going to focus on nutrition with expert insights from Purina Animal Nutrition. But first, let's set the stage with a comment from one of the legends in the cattle industry, Minnie Lou Bradley from Texas. Our cows have done better. Secondly, it's saving us money. It won't cost you near as much as if you just feed it part time. And your cows will always be in a good condition. And, you know, it's saving us money on uh, trucking. We don't go out there, but you know, have to fill them up about once a week or every 10 days, according to how much they're eating. And secondly, on labor. We were able to save money and add weight to our calves and get a better breed up. Isn't that enough to tell you what to do? Now, I'm sure you want to know exactly what program Miss Bradley is talking about, and that's what we're going to accomplish with our panel from Purina Animal Nutrition. And joining me now, we have Dr. Kelly Sanders, a field cattle consultant with Purina in Lubbock, Texas. Kelly, tell us about yourself. Yeah, as you indicated, I'm from Texas, from West Texas, actually. Grew up in a little small town called O'Donnell. I have a wife and two boys there. I've been with the company for 16 years and cover a lot of the Southwest and then also a little bit into Florida. And also with us is Dr. Chad Zender, a field cattle consultant with Purina in Stanchfield, Minnesota. Chad, tell us about your background. Sure, also a cattle consultant, live in Minnesota, work in the Dakotas in Minnesota, and uh, have a wife and two daughters at home and uh, been with the company for about 12 years. Mr. Rob Long is also with us. He's a sales specialist with Purina in Creston, Iowa. Rob, give us a little bit about your background. I'm Rob Long from Creston, Iowa. I've uh, been with the company for 19 years. I have a wife and three kids and uh, cover primarily the southern and southwest part of Iowa. And uh, our family is also actively involved in seed stock operation ourselves. And we also have a couple of cattlemen with us. First is Ty Watkins of Vest Ranches in Childress, Texas. What's your background, Ty? Well, originally I started off as a rodeo cowboy, rodeo and professionally. And I've been married for 25 years to my wife who is the fourth generation uh, owner of Vest Ranch. And uh, 13 years ago, I had the privilege of going to work with her and uh, been hard at it ever since. Very good. And finally, we have Toby Muller. Uh, he's with Ultra Ova in Adair, Iowa. Toby, tell us about yourself. Well, like you said, Kevin, I'm from Adair, Iowa. and got a wife and three kids. Uh, owned and operated an embryo transfer and ultrasound business for about 12 years now. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for coming to the show and uh, being willing to share some of your insights uh, with us. And um, Dr. Zender, I want to start with you. These are some exciting times uh, with Purina. Tell us a little bit about uh, some of the research efforts uh, and upgrades you have going yeah, on right now. Absolutely. You know, since 1926, when William Danforth, the founder of Purina, purchased the farm outside of St. Louis, Missouri, in the small town of Gray Summit, we've had a continued focus and commitment to animal nutrition research. And with that, that's brought a lot of firsts to the industry. Uh, we've had the first pelleted feeds in the U.S., uh, the first feeds that uh, specifically designed for show animals, extrusion process, intake modifying technology. Mm -hmm. So we, we're proud of those firsts that we brought to the industry. And that continues today. Those, that research commitment continues today. We've just, uh, in 2014, completed one of our company's largest expansions and remodeling projects mm -hmm. that we've ever undertaken. In fact, some folks call it doubling down. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2013, we invested just as much into the facility, 1,400-acre facility, as its original book value. Wow. So a lot, of, a lot of good things going on, and, and uh, I think this clip will help you learn a little bit more about what we're doing at the research facility. That's great. And Kelly, maybe you can expound a little bit about what that investment really means in terms of your beef research capabilities. Yeah, Kevin, uh, since the early 1960s, we've uh, been really committed to evaluating and did extensive research in animal feeding behavior. 
in rain supplements and also in complete diets and confinement. And that's really important in a lot of ways, especially in range diets where cows are feeding themselves. It reduces their labor costs and it also reduces their supplement cost as well. In a confinement feeding situation, we're actually able to increase the nutrient density of diets, making those cattle more efficient. Mm -hmm. Now the key to the whole thing is it has to work, right? Mm -hmm. And so what we wanna do is deliver those nutrients to those cows without them over consuming. So, Really, we're trying to maximize or actually make an operation's resources more efficient mm -hmm. by also optimizing cattle performance. Uh, so we, we, we like to look at that as, as sustainability, right? Mm -hmm. You're getting more with less, right? Mm -hmm. You bet. And so uh, that's why we've developed this uh, sustained nutrition program. One thing our facility does give us, it basically triples our ability or our actual uh, uh, ability to, to conduct research, innovate new products and programs. So we're more confident when we go out to the field that these products are gonna work exactly like we've designed them to. Well, thank you, Kelly. And let's learn even more about what's happening at the Purina Animal and Nutrition Center with this short video. Welcome to our 52,272,000 square foot nutrition center, the home of the checkerboard. 1,200 acres of working farmland where we serve 3,000 animals every day to make each one the best they can be. It's more than a nutrition center. It's a 1,200 acre foundation for integrity, innovation, performance, and quality. The proof is in the numbers. Over 20,000 studies and more than 100 patents to perfect taste, nutrition, digestion, and performance. That's over 85 years of continuous learning, and it won't stop anytime soon. More than 100 employees in the pursuit of animal excellence year-round. We stand proudly with the checkerboard. It represents the 100 million animals we feed every day, and the reason we never stop striving to deliver what they need to grow and thrive, to produce and win. The proof is in the numbers, and it begins here, with us. 1,200 acres, nine squares, one commitment. Look for the checkerboard. It's the only check you need. So Chad, uh, from what you said earlier, it sounds like you have about 50 years of intake studies. Uh, haven't you about got it figured out by now? Yeah, that's a great question, Kevin, and one we often ask ourselves. But, you know, as things evolve and the industry involves, uh, we need to continue that research and with over 1600 ingredients and ingredient combination studies done we feel we have a pretty good handle and understand intake modification and intake and what affects intake of cattle as well as anybody in the industry but we can't quit there mm -hmm. uh, we need to mitigate the risk of relying too much on one individual ingredient or a combination of ingredients so as pricing changes supply changes availability of ingredients change mm -hmm. we need to understand how those interact and, and, and those combinations work together so we can make those substitutions if necessary. And Kelly alluded to uh, sustained nutrition, mm -hmm. and one thing we're, we know and, and one thing we're committed to is that these intake modifying ingredients also need to provide a nutritional component to their diet. So whether it be energy, protein, or mineral, they need to have do something besides just modify that intake. Very so good. that that research continues. Have anything to add, Kelly? Yeah, well, one thing we got to remember is ingredients are always changing in the feedstuffs we're having to put in feed, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, you think about corn. Corn, the protein in corn has dropped over the last decade, and so we're always having to reevaluate that. Uh, the other thing is byproducts that are out there today, mm -hmm. you know, from the ethanol industry and the, and the uh, sweetener industries, their, their nutrient profiles are changing constantly, mm -hmm. and also their mineral profiles, and those can actually affect animal intake and how cattle consume feed. And so we're always evaluating that stuff. We've got a large database, but we have to continue to do that because the genetics of plants are changing and also the process of ingredients are changing. Great insight to begin. Now, if you'd like more information about cattle nutrition, Purina, or any of our discussion topics today, you can visit the website cattle.purinamills.com. Still ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll have more about the value of sustained nutrition and the strategies that can result in more and heavier calves. Stay with us. We'll be right back. You're watching NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen on RFD TV.
people, I think a rancher has to be a steward of the land. There's nobody else that can take care of land better than a rancher. When we switched over to the uh, Perina products, it was a step in the right direction. The difference we see in the cattle is the consistency of their nutrition. The cattle hold their condition a lot better throughout the whole year. It does make a difference that we can see, day in and day out. We don't sit idle, wondering how we're gonna build a better truck. We get out there and walk a mile, thousands of miles, in the footsteps of the guys we build trucks for. The groundbreaking Ram Heavy Duty, with 30,000 pounds of towing and 850 pound feet of torque. Welcome back to this special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. As we hear from the animal nutrition experts with Purina and learn about how they research and develop feed and nutrition supplements to support the work of cattlemen and women in caring for their animals. Dr. Chris Fercario, manager of the Beef Cattle Research Unit for Purina, takes us on a quick tour of one of the new facilities there. Welcome to the new Beef Innovation Center at the Purina Animal Nutrition Center. We designed this facility basically to serve two main purposes. Number one, on the beef research side, we wanted to increase our capabilities in the area of intake modifying technology. And number two, we wanted to have a conference center where we can actually come in and utilize the facility for training as well as educational events. The facility was designed basically to hold nine pens of cattle with six head each. As you notice, look at the feed bunks as around me, each individual animal is fitted with an electronic transponder that corresponds to one of those specific feed gates. Utilizing this equipment from Kalen Technologies allows us to measure individual intake within each one of these pins. But that's only part of the story. To go along with that individual intake, each one of these bunks is suspended in a framework that allows us to monitor that activity at the feed bunk with our eating behavior equipment. That metal framework is basically sitting upon a load cell, and those load cells are controlled by these silver boxes. And that's really the guts of the a whole equation. We are able to control intake, monitor that intake, and monitor the eating behavior by utilizing the Kalen gates as well as the equipment and tying all that information in to see and help us understand how we can utilize ingredients, new technologies, possibly new feed additives in the future to help us modify the eating patterns of cattle so we can improve their productivity not only on the performance side but also on the forage intake and complete diet side. Behind me are windows which lead to an observation room, which is the second part of the reason behind the building, the research as well as education and teaching. Within that conference room, we can comfortably seat about 80 people at tables so they can be in a good environment for learning as well as understanding the research capabilities that we have here at the facility. They're able to look through the windows and observe the research techniques that we utilize as we improve our techniques for intake modifying technology products and programs. But at the same time, they're not interrupting our daily activities or interrupting the research activities that occur with the cattle. You know, gentlemen, all this research is great, but ultimately it has to generate results. And I guess, Rob, I'd, I'd ask you, from a sales rep's perspective, how does Purina's ongoing investment in research generate results for your customer? Kevin, we host a, a series of VIPs uh, for producers throughout the year down at the research farm. They're very valuable to us and, and the producers as well as we host them down there. They get to see all this technology firsthand and all this research that we do firsthand at the research farm, hands-on, get out into our units, our new beef unit that Chad alluded to with all the remodeling that we've done down there, and really brings everything home. I mean, most of my producers say this is where it really brings things together, what you tell us out in the field when we come to the research farm, we really see it and live it and breathe it down there. So well, let's talk to our producers. I mean, Ty, have you been to the research facility, I guess, first question, and secondly, um, why or how does the investment period makes in research matter to you? Yes, sir, I had the opportunity to visit the facility, and it's a lot like Rob said. It, it allowed us to see firsthand what was going on there in the research and how they, they extract the data, 
they correlate that to to us at the ranch and uh, you know someone has to do the research out there in these products that, that we're we're putting there because uh, we have to make a decision and to find out as to have the information to make the best decision possible for our operation is what Perina is really good about educating the producer and then you know all of us whether you read it or whether you know firsthand university funding public funding different things for research those are those are getting smaller every day mm -hmm. and Perina Land of Lakes the Perina, Perina Animal Nutrition they are committed to through this facility it demonstrated to me that they're they're committed to the long term industry and to my bottom line so as a producer that's very important Toby, what's your take on this? Have you been to the research facility as well? Actually, I haven't had the privilege of being down there. Uh, my brother actually takes care of the recip cows, Tyler, and, and uh, he went last winter and was very impressed with the facility. Um, you know, and it, it means a lot, like Ty said, you know, our, our research money is, is shrinking in our university. Somebody has to do that. We don't want to be the guinea pigs. Uh, margins are shrinking. We can't afford to test things out on the farm, on the ranch, and, and uh, this kind of facility um, helps us out a bunch, and you know to tie that together, uh, you got to have a, you got to have a, a good team behind you. You know we got Rob back back home, and and between him and Adair feeding grain, I can call and, and get an answer for me. Uh, a producer of mine that may not even buy Prina products, they're really good about about any questions we may have about nutrition. So, you know I, I want to touch back on one of the topics that has been an outcome of research, which is the whole intake modifying technology, changing cattle's eating behavior and, and the concept you all call sustained nutrition. And I guess, Rob, how have you seen that directly benefit customers? Kevin, we've done a lot of sustained nutrition work uh, across the southern Iowa region and, and primarily it's benefited us in our area. Um, we've seen shrinking pasture ground, uh, land resources the last several years with high dollar grain prices. Um, so it's allowed us to utilize more cows on less acres. We've seen better breed back, better conception rates, uh, you know, just overall better performance and getting that true genetic potential out of those cattle by maximizing our nutrition, you know, 365 days of the year. Uh, maybe I'm missing something, but it, but it seems like we're really talking about self-feeding, a self-fed basis, whether you're in block or tub or what have you. And so, Maybe, Dr. Sanders, help me understand how this is different than other self-feeding technologies. Right, Kevin. In short, it works. And what I mean by that is we're able to control intake. So those cows don't overconsume, but we're still able to provide the necessary nutrients to meet the requirements of the cow and the calf. We really have to face it. A cow is usually not just eating for herself. She's usually eating for two or for three. Mm -hmm. That calf in utero and herself, or that calf in utero, herself, and a calf by her side. Mm -hmm. Other things are changing too. Grass is always changing with quality and quantity. Her requirements are changing, whether she's in gestation or in lactation. And so we're trying to provide nutrients more precisely with IM technology. Very good. Thanks for your comments, gentlemen, and don't go away. We'll be right back with more on Cattle Nutrition right after this. No storm is too powerful for new Purina wind and rain storm minerals formulated with ultimate weather resistance. That means more minerals in the feeder and available to your cattle. Wind and rain storm minerals provide more consistent intake and balanced mineral nutrition to optimize herd health and breedback rates. See the difference at your local Purina dealer or visit CattleNutrition.com. Wind and rain storm minerals, another way Purina is building better cattle. We stand for what we believe in. We believe in you. It's more than a job. It's your way of life. Who you are, where you live, and what you do. The way you treat your cattle, your family, your employees, and your neighbors. The water you drink, the air you breathe, and the ground you walk on. What you do every day gives families something to gather around every night. It's about doing what's right for your cattle, your land, your community, and your business. It's your livelihood, and it means as much to us as it does to you. We all believe in responsible beef. Let's stand together at responsiblebeef.com.
Welcome back. We're focusing on animal nutrition and the work of Purina in helping producers grow and care for their cattle in the most efficient ways possible. And Kelly, before break, you had mentioned the concept of precise nutrition. What does that mean to a rancher? Yeah, Kevin, we've been able to collect a lot of good data over the past several years on sustained nutrition from ranchers throughout the whole country. And not only do we have a good economic return for that particular program, but also we get increased winging weights, increased conception rates as well. Uh, one thing we're addressing with that is what we call maternal hunger. That's when a cow is in nutritional stress or she's lost weight or losing weight. And so she has a greater drive to eat nutrients, and so she a lot of times overconsumes. And so by supplementing those cattle with, with sustained nutrition more precisely, we can lower our actually feed intake on that program. The other thing we can address is also the phenomenon of fetal programming or an epigenetic effect. And basically we're able to supply nutrients to that calf while it's in utero so it develops correctly. Mm -hmm. And so when it's born, it can actually perform at its full genetic potential. That's great. And, you know, since we have a couple of producers on the show, I'd like to turn to you gentlemen. And Toby, to begin with, you run an embryo transplant center. So I presume that precise nutrition and some of these uh, conception rate issues uh, become pretty important to you and your customers. Tell us more. Yeah, we really feel like any, any uh, mistakes we make in nutrition are exemplified uh, in the embryo transfer world. Um, if, if we make a mistake, we're going to pay for it. Uh, we, we tend to use the sustained nutrition um, on, our, on our transition periods, going from corn stalks in Iowa um, into the feedlot. We want to keep those cows out and get exercise as long as possible, but those corn stalks are drying up. Um, we can put those products out. We know they're getting them, um, and, and we can save on that feedlot cost. But uh, also, I guess we use them when we're transitioning to pasture. And it's interesting, you know, when we go to that washy grass in Iowa, um, those cattle will go after those blocks like crazy. They need it. Um, two weeks later, three weeks later, that grass hardens up and, and they quit going to them near as much. I mean, so they really regulate the intake they need. It's, it's very interesting. That is interesting. And Ty, your conditions in Childress, I know, are a lot different than Western Iowa. Uh, what's been your experience with sustained nutrition? Well, I'd have to say it's definitely different visiting with these guys. You know, they're talking about August, September, 34, 35 inches of rain. And uh, even though we've been blessed, we started getting rain uh, about Memorial Day this year. And we've had about 13 inches to date. Uh, but the AccuRation program that we're using uh, and the sustained nutrition, what it's, it's allowed us, when we initially implemented the program, we were looking for grazing distribution to, to get those cattle out to, to utilize parts of the pasture. Uh, you know, that weren't, that weren't necessarily the, the, the best ground that they wanted to go and graze. Uh, mm -hmm. So by, by moving those lick tanks to those areas, you know, it helped us with our grazing distribution. We saw cattle utilizing the whole pasture mm -hmm. and whatnot. But additional benefits that we saw uh, that weren't even calculated into to the cost uh, were the fact that the cattle were grazing all the pasture. Mm -hmm. we, had, we had cattle that were maybe timid coming to the feed line in the traditional Cuban method like we use out in the West Texas pastures. I mean, we may have a pasture that's anywhere between 2,000 and 12,000 acres, mm -hmm. which, you know, so the pasture sizes are different. So what we had is those cattle that were timid coming to the feed line, they can go and access feed at any time. Mm -hmm. uh, newborn calves that maybe aren't brought up, you know, mamas will hold them out there two or three days, you know, they've got a baby out there. They're able to access, mm -hmm. you know, 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. But to clarify, that they're not just going to the lick tank just to, to lick and whatnot and not use the forage that's out there. So many people say, well, you know, they're, gonna, they're just going to be able to sit there and lick that tank all day long. Well, with the AccuRation, with the limiters in it, mm. they're able to utilize the forage, go and snack eat, and then move on and utilize the forage. And we've just seen them move around the pastures in a continuous basis. But the, uh, the other thing is, is that you don't have cattle that are conditioned when they hear a pickup mm -hmm. and whatnot. Here they go, they cross the pasture. They've got these babies mm. coming right behind them. And in the dry times that we had in 11 and 12, those babies aren't sucking up the dust. We all know about the dust pneumonias and, and different things that are out there that mm -hmm. in the secondary and, and third stages where these cattle leave the ranches. Uh, now these cattle are out grazing. We go through whether we're guiding hunters, whether we're just checking things on the ranch, checking waters, have to go repair a windmill. Now these cattle, they're grazing, they look up mm. at you and it's no big deal. So, so there's no telling how much body condition we've left on these cows mm. just from them not chasing a feed truck. 
That really is interesting perspective. Thank you for that. And to add a bit more to this conversation, let's hear from other producers ranging from Texas to Colorado about their own experience with the Sustained Nutrition Program. Purina's been a really good partner for a number of years for us. And, and without that, I know that this year would be almost impossible because we've, our cows we've had on the Purina Superlix program, we keep that out 365 days a year. Those cows have, have uh, stayed in really good body condition even though we've had no moisture. They've, they've been able to adjust and adapt to forage that's, that's poor quality. We're starting to calve now and uh, these calves are, are very vigorous. They're hitting the ground, jumping up, nursing, doing really well. And so we're, we're pleased with the amount of heat stress that, that the cows went through this summer and the type of forage. Uh, that, that's been really, really good. With their help and being out here with us, uh, guiding us on these kinds of decisions, um, I don't think we'll miss a beat in, in what our expectations are of the cattle as we finish them out. One of the things we do when we uh, wean the calves and then preg check the cows, we take a body score right then and then monitor that through the winter and spring time. And prior to this, we'd have a lot of fluctuation in there, kind of depending on what the pasture condition was or other factors. But now, even though there's, there's still those variable um, environmental factors, um, it, they, they just really level out really well. And in fact, this year, I think we probably gained almost a, a body score through the winter time. We didn't have as near as difficult a winter as some, but um, yeah, so that's something that's going to help us now as we calve because they're in much better condition. And we'll have more on the value of sustained nutrition for your herd right after this. Well, I think a rancher has to be a steward of the land. There's nobody else that can take care of land better than a rancher can because he has to make his living off of it. When we switched over to the uh, Perina products, it was uh, a step in the right direction. And uh, it's, it's really been profitable for us. It just makes that much of a difference. The difference we see in the cattle is the consistency of their nutrition. They don't go up and down drastically in weight. Every head on this ranch is fed the uh, Purina Superlix 30. If we keep, it, keep them on that feed, they stay in optimum condition year round. The cattle hold their condition a lot better all through, throughout the whole year. The products they're producing are um, very much in line with what the rancher needs to be using to uh, be profitable in the future. That's the best thing ever happened to us. It does make a difference that we can see day in and day out. Welcome back. We have a few more Purina research success stories we need to get to. So let's shift gears and talk about one of the first things cattlemen consider in their cow nutrition programs, and that's mineral nutrition. Dr. Zenner, this can be complicated, but uh, you can boil that down to the basics for us. Is that right? Yeah, certainly. We like to talk about three basics. Uh, number one, cows need mineral supplementation. As you look at the forages that make up the base of their diet, uh, they're deficient in forages, so we need mineral supplementation. Number two, we can put the best mineral formulation together to match those needs. But if that cow does not consume that mineral, we don't get it into the cow, it's doing us no good. And third, it's pretty simple, Purina has a comprehensive line of minerals to meet those deficiencies in your area or region. So, so you mentioned that uh, getting in the mineral into the cow is the first step, but that can be difficult. Uh, give us your perspective yeah, on absolutely. how to do that. Absolutely, and that, that's something we, we take pride in and the, the success we've had in our formulations. Uh, as we look at mineral nutrition and things we're trying to supplement, magnesium oxide is a good example. Uh, Magox is bitter and unpalatable to the cows, mm. but we need that supplementation, especially as we look at uh, fast growing forages, lush forages that we often see in the spring. Uh, they're high in potassium and low in magnesium, and if we don't supplement that magnesium, we can uh, lead to a situation called grass tetany, which can be deadly. So mm -hmm. 
Being able to get that mineral supplementation, supplementation in the cows is certainly important. And we continue to focus on that. Having the research facility, you know, again, anybody can put a mineral formulation together, but we have the facilities to look at that, to, to look at intake and consistent intake, and we continue to do that today. And we've had success, success with the wind and rain mineral formulas. And when those intake challenges are, are more severe because of soil or water, our wind and rain mineral tubs, our molasses-based mineral tubs, give us excellent continu continuous and, and intake. So Rob, I'd, I'd invite you to jump in and, and tell us a little bit more about the wind and rain product line that, uh, that Chaz is talking about. Uh, Kevin, we utilize both in our country, um, the loose wind and rain storm mineral and the wind and rain mineral tubs. Um, my guest Toby, he utilizes the wind and rain mineral tubs. Um, in our country, we get busy this time of year and in the springtime, we're obviously in, in green country. So uh, a lot of our producers have cows on the side and we get busy and caught up in the field. So those mineral tubs has probably been the fastest growing segment of my business is because it allows us to put multiple pounds of mineral out in those pastures and they have constant nutrition that they will consume consistent intakes and uh, we, we can go to the field confidently and know those cows mineral needs are taken care of for a period of time. So let's turn to our cattlemen again. Uh, what's been your experience with the appearing of mineral programs? Ty, Toby? Well, I tell you, for, for us personally at Vest Ranch, the, we're seeing consistent consumption with the loose. We're, we're on the wind and rain uh, storm mineral as well for our cow herd. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're seeing, you know, good consistent four ounces a day on consumption. Mm -hmm. And then based on, once again, based on forage quality, mm -hmm. we see if that consumption is, is, is up or down and then also where they are in gestation. Mm -hmm. uh, so we see the consumption there and we learn, we learn a lot about what the cows are telling us through the mineral consumption. Mm -hmm. Then our, our first calf heifers and our yearling heifers, what we're doing is we, we use the wind and rain tub mm -hmm. uh, for those heifers because like they said, with the molasses mm -hmm. uh, included in there, uh, we're seeing our intakes at six ounces, sometimes more. But once again, uh, it all goes back to forage quality. We think we understand, you know, years of history, We've, we have ranch management been with us 40 years, years of history. We look at the grass and we think we understand, but these products that Perina's has developed for us mm -hmm. has given us the opportunity the cattle are telling us based on what their consumptions are, what they're needing. Toby, what would you add? Well, I guess uh, I'd agree with Chad. Uh, most important thing is to get it into them. Mm. You know, our recipient program is a little unique. We're bringing cattle in from a lot of different places. They're not uh, cattle that have been on our ranch or our farm for a long time, so we don't know what they're getting. And we want to make sure that they're getting plenty of it. And, and those tubs, they like them, they use them. Um, we know, uh, and we can tell a lot about the forage quality. I mean, as, as, as they, and then their mineral levels, as they come up, they drop down and, uh, and, and consume exactly, I guess, what their body tells them they need. So uh, we've been really happy with them. That's great discussion and great insight. And if you like what you're hearing and would like more information about cattle nutrition, Purina, or any of our discussion topics today, you can always visit the website cattle.purinamills.com. We'll be right back. Whether you're feeding cattle, milking cows, or baling hay, the work on your farm is never done, which is why you need equipment that works as hard as you do. Get the efficiency and versatility you need with Case IH. From farm all compact and utility tractors to balers and mowers, all Case IH equipment is designed with one thing in mind, getting the job done. To learn more, visit caseih.com slash livestock. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprevo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprevo. Zuprevo is a fast acting, long lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprevo from Merck Animal Health. Welcome back to this special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen and Cattlemen as we get insights into sustained nutrition. 
Now, one of the things uh, that we wanted to talk a little bit about is um, starting calves. And Dr. Sanders, can you give us uh, some of your perspective on some of the proven tactics to get calves off to a good start? Right, our, our, our starting program is called A Great Start, so it's very fitting that you uh, uh, referred to that. And we won't really get into to, to, uh, uh, products right now, and we'll discuss that later. But what I want to do is just discuss a little bit what some of the basics are. And I think one of the cornerstones of starting calves off right is having a good mineral program mm -hmm. for that cow and that calf so he has all the nutrients necessary to build immunity when he comes into that starter pen. Mm -hmm. Second thing is have a plan. Mm -hmm. You need a really good plan. Know what you're gonna feed. Have the feed ready to go. Have your pens ready, fresh water and hay in the bunk and get your veterinarian involved so they know what vaccines you're gonna give and what antibiotics you might actually need. So have your full plan ready to go. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna talk about pro, uh, the actual products, but what I'd tell you is Get a hold of your local Purina rep, mm. get a hold of your dealer so that they can actually design a feeding program that will actually fit your operation and the goals that you're wanting to try to achieve. So Dr. Zender, I understand that Purina does have a number of options as it comes to or relates to products in the Great Starts program. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, I think a great way to start that discussion is listen to one of our producers and customers, Mr. Mark Sullivan out in Tennessee and how he's implemented one of our programs into his operation. Very good. A lot of the cattle that we're going to, uh, that are coming to our operation, uh, have had nothing but mama's milk and green grass and pond water. It's very important to uh, get them hydrated and get some feed in them. We want to get them settled and, and comfortable just as quickly as possible. And good feed is, is uh, probably the number one uh, part of that. We have been Purina customers for quite some time. Um, we, we used uh, the impact starter um, on some cattle. We've used Precon 5. Uh, we've had good success with all of them uh, in, in different capacities, but um, it's a good feed. Uh, it's, uh, it's well put together. It's um, um, consistent. I don't want to mix a lot of feeds. Um, frees up uh, time and manpower and uh, helps us concentrate more on what we think we do better and that is uh, looking after stock calves. So Dr. Zender, what would you add to Mark Sullivan's comments? You know, I think one of the key points he made is how he's able to optimize his resources and labor resources. And as we put these starter programs together, certainly nutrition is important and that, that needs to be key and at the forefront, but one size doesn't fit all. We need to understand the producer, the goals of the producer, the labor resources, the facilities, yeah. uh, the pens, as Kelly mentioned. What does that producer have to work with? And then we can put a program together. Uh, so we've got a whole host of programs we can, can look at. Uh, one program might be the Stress Care 5, previously known as Precon 5 that, yeah. that Mr. Sullivan alluded to. It's a five pound starter very palatable mm -hmm. and if a producer's got their own feed resources such as a feed yard or if we're going back out in some grass and we want a low inclusion starter that's a great product contains a research proven level of the zen pro organic trace minerals mm. as well as diamond vxpc so a great starter a five pound inclusion starter if getting cattle up on feed in a fast fashion is the goal of the producer the precon complete fits previously known as preconditioning receiving chow mm. the precon complete we can get cattle up to three percent of their body weight in as short as three to five days mm. and then if the health is there we'll move those cattle on to the next step if we want to maximize or optimize our labor resources and, and use a self feeder and maximize our performance our accuration starter fit uh, starter complete fits extremely well there with the intake modifying technology, we're able to use a higher energy starter, get very efficient gains, very fast gains, our highest performing starter in terms of average daily gain and efficiency. So a great, pro great product for somebody at, with limited resources. And with all these programs, and even if you're using a commodity starter, we have great faith and a lot of success with our, our wind and rain Avela 4 tub mm. or a Perina stress tub. Again, the molasses-based tubs. These tubs not only provide nutrition to mm -hmm. the timid calves that don't come to the bunk in an immediate fashion, but also just that licking activity, mm -hmm. producing slive as a natural buffer to the rumen. Mm -hmm. And we've just seen a lot of success, whether it be in the cow-calf operation or commercial feed yards. Those, those uh, stress tubs and Avail of Four tubs need to go into every receiving program. What a great lineup. And Rob, tell us how you use these Great Starts programs in your market. Well, Kevin, I'll piggyback on the last thing Chad just said. Our Purina stress tubs 
is for everyone. I would not wean any cattle without any pre distressed tubs. I mean, it's it's proven. The uh, results are there. I think the testimonials are there. So that's the one thing that every producer can do. And again, I keep alluding to in our market, um, you know, the feed resources we have. We probably waste more feed resources than what Ty does down in West Texas. So I get challenged all the time by my producers is, why do we need to use one of your complete starting programs? Well, in today's environment and economy, I mean, if you just lose one calf, when we're talking the market values of these calves today, that pays for a lot of commercial starter. And with our uh, complete starter lines, we primarily use the accuration starter in our territory with higher value calves, tend to work with a lot of seed stock producers. But uh, it's very meaningful to get those calves started. Every mouthful of nutrition is the same in a complete starter. Mm. And you know, like Kelly alluded to with a lot of the commodity bases around, I mean, you can have a lot of fluctuations. So with a complete starter, you know every mouthful those calves come up and take is, is nutritionally uh, satisfied. And Ty, real quick, what's been your experience? My experience is just like Dr. Sanders said, and I had the, pleasure, the privilege of working with him and John Gardner, our representative uh, there in my area. You have a plan, you lay the foundation. We use pre-con complete there at the ranch. We'll bring those calves in and we'll put them together. We'll have them in the pen three to five days. We'll get them on the self feeders. Then we'll open the gate, we'll hold those cattle up, turn them out on the grass, mm. and then we'll pull those feeders out and let those cattle finish up uh, out of those self feeders. Then at that point, we have the lick tanks out that has the 2012 liquid for our situation is what we utilize. Those cattle are on grass, they have the additional supplement uh, there that they need. Mm -hmm. And then uh, also as a backup, we'll, we'll put out both minerals, the loose and the, the wind and rain tub. Mm -hmm. Because for us, we want the calves on the mineral. You know, they're going through a stressful period. They're familiar with the loose mineral out in the pasture with the cows. Some of them will be on it. The others will go straight to the, the wind and rain tub. So uh, we found that, that overall that that has just worked exceptionally well for us. Those are some great practical suggestions. Thank you so much. To find out more about this and other topics related to cattle nutrition and Purina, visit the website cattle.purinamills.com. Now don't go away. We'll be back with Baxter Black and much more right after this. No storm is too powerful for new Purina wind and rain storm minerals, formulated with ultimate weather resistance. That means more minerals in the feeder and available to your cattle. Wind and rain storm minerals provide more consistent intake and balanced mineral nutrition to optimize herd health and breedback rates. See the difference at your local Purina dealer or visit CattleNutrition.com. Wind and rain storm minerals, another way Purina is building better cattle. Back on those Texas plains. Join us, Riders in the Sky, for sizzling hot San Antonio. It's the 2015 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show. Woo! So grab the family and head to Texas for the latest cattle industry information and education, plus some fun and entertainment with us. <laughs> it's an event you won't want to miss. Join us in San Antonio, Texas, February 4th through February 7th. There's plenty more information at BeefUSA.org. And we'll be back on those Texas plains. See you there, Saddle Pals. Yeet. We know who made that hitch. We know who cut the steel, who milled the ball, and who welded the seams. We know who tested, measured, and checked. We even know who thought the whole thing up. We're B&W, and we know your hitch. Because we don't make them halfway around the world. We make them all right here. B&W. Trusted. Working your cattle just got easier. Introducing the new Vet Gun Delivery System, a new way to apply topical insecticides to your cattle. The Vet Gun lets you remotely treat cattle with effective parasite control, so you can do it from an ATV, on horseback, or just walking among the herd. It's that simple. The proven topical insecticide AML Vet Cap is used with the Vet Gun. It works fast to control horn flies and lice while minimizing stress on your cattle. Fast, easy, effective. Vet Gun. Check with your animal health supplier for availability.
Triangles have a unique place in our world. Engineers use them to build bridges. Pythagoras used it to create his theorem, and the shortstop uses it to make a double play. Triangles strengthen structures. They take three straight lines going nowhere and form a bond that can withstand great pressure. Now I get to see this cohesive combination in another triangle, woman, horse, child. It's really evident when the child has Down syndrome or multiple sclerosis or any other disability that restricts their possibilities. And a lot of these equine therapeutic riding programs that I've visited, women are the predominant hands-on helpers in the arena. To be successful, a mutual trust has to be established. See, a woman introduces the child to the horse, and this allows the child to give the horse the benefit of the doubt because the woman trusts the horse and the child trusts the woman. When the child is set up on a horse's back, it's really still in his mother's arms, ready to be rescued if need be. And through a long progression of walks around the arena, the child's faith increases in the horse and eventually, the child will trust it. So the triangle is complete. We've connected the woman to the child, to the horse, and back to the woman. And it's especially obvious at any equine therapeutic riding center, check it out for yourself. You'll see small islands of woman, horse, child. Concentrate on one of those triangles. And then imagine the child on the horse is yours. You become hypersensitive to the slightest movement, be it protective or encouraging or loving. And even the smallest step in this magic triangle performance going on in the arena becomes magnified. Successes are marked in the tiniest gesture and the slightest touch and a tentative smile and the skip of a heartbeat. And through the cloud that puts you in their triangle, you hear the softest of voices saying, it's all right, he won't hurt you. This is Baxter Black from out there. Thanks, Baxter. We always enjoy our visits with you. Now, I want to remind you that coming up on November 11th, we'll have a special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen and Cattlemen coming to you live from Washington, D.C. That will be just one week after the 2014 midterm elections. So we'll be live in Washington on that Tuesday night to visit with members of Congress and NCBA Washington staff about the impact of the elections and the policy challenges ahead for the U.S. beef cattle industry. Join us Tuesday evening, November 11th at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time for a special live edition of Cattlemen to Cattlemen. As we wrap up our program, let's hear once more from some producers around the country as they reflect on Purina's Sustained Nutrition Program. The Superlux worked really well for us. Uh, we saw uh, through the winter, uh, we were short on grass. Uh, went into the winter with very little surplus grass. We had a, a dry fall here. And the Superlux, I think, uh, main, helped maintain the body score on the mama cows, the brood cows. And uh, it saved us on some hay. And uh, it also saved on the, on the forage that we did have that was accessible to the cattle. Well, with, with feeding their products and, and with the wind and rain and the storm and anything, our, our cattle seem to do more of what they're supposed to do. They breed back well, they calve well, they raise some, some, some good calves, and it just is, everything's just better. It's just simpler. You know, the deal with Purina is it's, it just helps you on the bottom line. For the feed intake, if you can move your breed up, that's real money. And uh, I mean, I've been pretty clear with Purina from the beginning. It's, it's about bottom line. Can you make a difference in our bottom line, whether it be saving us fuel, labor, or improve body condition on the cows? That's, that's what it's about. And they've been able to achieve that. Longevity makes you money. And a cow that stays in your herd and, and produces a calf every year is some of the best economic factors you can have. And so we've really worked on longevity in this herd early maturity, 
and feed conversion. You'll be surprised what it does to your bottom line. Gentlemen, what message do you want to leave us with when it comes to the value of sustained nutrition and building better cattle? Toby? Well, I guess these are exciting times in the cattle industry. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the guys at Perina, ever-changing industry, and then we don't need to stand still, and they're poised and ready to keep moving forward. And uh, I guess I'd also like to thank NCBA. Mm. I was about joking with Ty, you know, yesterday beforehand. I said, you know, even Ty is just one man. Yeah. But with NCBA, we got a voice out there, and uh, it's very important in these changing times. Very good, Ty. Without a doubt, NCBA, the publication that, uh, that I get to read at the ranch, uh, keeps me informed of what's going on in Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, we're very fortunate to have them representing us. Sustained nutrition, bottom line, uh, profitability, uh, the opportunity to get this ranch that we're so proud of to the fifth generation, mm -hmm. and uh, Perina, uh, with the work they, they uh, the team, the work that we have with them, the relationship is going to give us the best opportunity to do that. Very good, Rob. Again, uh, you know, with the economic times we're experiencing here and blessed with in the cattle industry, mm -hmm. sustained nutrition's at the forefront. Um, nutrition's been brought to the spotlight for our producers. Uh, they put more emphasis and more focus on their nutrition, knowing that their returns are greater now. And, and uh, again, would like to thank NCBA for allowing us on here and taking their message to, the, to all the producers out there. Dr. Zander? Yeah, I mean, one of my biggest rewards as a Prina employee is, is seeing the role that our programs play in the success of their operations. And, and we know the passion and the commitment and the investment they have in their operations. And, and playing a role in that success, as, as Ty alluded to, that, that's a serious responsibility and one we, we do take very seriously. Dr. Sanders? You know, it's really about teamwork with our customers and with our dealers to really figure out what products and programs we need to innovate with. Mm -hmm. And lastly, I would just like to thank our customers. Mm -hmm. I'd like to thank them for putting their trust in the people of Perina and the recommendations that we make, our products and programs, and so we greatly appreciate their business. And if you're not a Perina customer, we'd really like to challenge you to get with a Perina representative, a Perina dealer, and just see what our, our programs and our sustained nutrition can do for your program. Very good. Thank you guys for coming to the show. And that wraps up this edition of NCBA's Cattleman the Cattleman. Thanks so much for watching. I hope we'll see you right back here next week on RFD TV.